Okay, before the blessing, let's sit and meditate for a few minutes. Take some time for your mind to settle down. You've been busy all morning. And the mind that's busy tends to fly off in different directions, like a big flock of birds. And if you've seen them, when they fly through the sky, they go all over the place. But then when they land, they land, and they land very neatly, neatly spaced, and say, along a telephone wire. In the same way, I think you're reminded landing neatly on the breath, taking the breath as your foundation. As you go through the day, this is your lifeline. Because you're going to be hearing things and seeing things and sensing things throughout the day, some of which we like, some of which we don't like. And both the things that we like and the things that we don't like can cause trouble. We tend not to see the trouble of the things that we like, but they can make us complacent. So you have to watch out for both cases. There's a story of previous Buddha, and Mara inspired the people of a village to curse the monks as they went for their alms, to see if they could spoil their mindfulness. The monks came back and told the Buddha, and the Buddha told them, okay, when people curse you, just think thoughts of goodwill. So the Mara saw that that didn't work, so then he had the people praise him, hoping that they would get complacent and carried away by the praise. So the monks came back and told the Buddha. And he said, in cases like that, think of inconstancy. People praise you one day, they criticize you the next day. So don't look for your food, don't look for your nourishment outside. Use the breath, use your concentration as your nourishment. And when you're well nourished inside, then it's as if you're not trying to feed off of other people. When you're not feeding off them, they can say what they want and do what they want. Because you're not taking it in, it's not going to have an impact. They have some impact, but the fact that you're nourished puts you in a position where you can think more clearly about it. Think thoughts of goodwill when they're useful. Think thoughts of inconstancy when those are helpful. In other words, you're in a stronger position, and when you're coming from a position of strength, you're more likely to do the right thing, say the right thing, think the right thing. It's in this way that your meditation benefits not only you, but the people around you. You make yourself a refuge, and other people find that they have someone who's solid in their lives. And that helps them as well. So maintain your lifeline. Maintain this connection, because as you leave the place like this, you can't take the trees with you, you can't take the atmosphere, but you can take the skills you've developed, and they're not meant just for sitting with your eyes closed or doing formal walking meditation. Wherever you walk, wherever you go, wherever, whatever you do, you've got your breath with you, so make it a comfortable breath. Make it a breath that really does feel nourishing. And that can be the foundation of all kinds of good things in your life. Even when things outside are not good, you've got your safe place inside. <laughs>